Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Laverne Candidates Forum. My name is Lupe Galleta Estrella. I'm the Assistant City Clerk for the City of Laverne. I would like to take this opportunity, before we start, to thank the many volunteers that are here tonight to assist in the forum. I'd like to give special thanks to Deborah Fritz, Deputy City Clerk, Yvonne Durang, Community Services, Services Manager, and her staff for setting up this room in our election, okay? I'd like to also thank LVTV Channel 3, they're in the back there, for recording the forum, which will be aired starting next week. Copies of the airing schedule are available at the front desk and will be posted on the city's website. Before I start, I'd like you to know that in December of 2021, the city of Laverne moved to a five district election system, which will be implemented for the first time this election. Rather than voting for all the council in an at-large citywide election, residents will now vote for one council member who lives in their district. The candidates are running for four year terms in district one, three, and four. There will be an opportunity for the audience to ask questions of the candidates during the program. If you don't pick up a note card and pencil on your way in, we have individuals, Eddie and Lisa, they're in the back, wave, yeah. Walking around and they'll hand them and they'll pick up your card or hand you a, a piece of paper or pencil if you need it. We will do our best to, do, to get as many questions as we can, but please note that the time constraints may not make that possible. Any unread questions will be provided to the candidates for their response. Also, after the forum, the candidate, candidates have set up a individual tables with their literatures in the back rooms. Uh, so I'm gonna start explaining to you the process for tonight's forum. It will be broken into five phrases, uh, phases. Sorry about that. Phase one, opening comments. Three minutes for each candidate. Phase two, questions for all seven candidates. Two minutes, two rounds. Phase three, specific district candidate questions. Two minutes, two rounds. Phase four, if time permits, individual questions to a candidate. One minute each, one round. Phase five is the closing comments. Each candidate have three minutes. Based on the format and the number of candidates, we expect to be done around 8.30 p.m. There will be timekeepers in the front row, Barbara and Adela, and they'll, the following is the breakdown for all the questions. Yellow, can you raise up the yellow? 30 seconds. Red stays up at 10 seconds until the candidate stops. So now, I have the privilege of introducing tonight's moderator, and we're very fortunate, really we are, <laughs> to have the San Bernardino County Supervisor Court Judge Stan Rickard overseeing the forum tonight. Judge Rickard will be following the city rules of procedure as he monitor monitors the, the forum. Judge Rickard is a graduate of the University of Utah and a graduate of Columbia Law, Law School before taking the bench. Judge Rickard was a civil trial lawyer handling insurance defense cases and also ran his own law firm for 20 years. In, two, in 2001, the Supreme Court appointed him to, the state, to be one of the five state bar court trial judges. Oh, that's pretty good. In 2002, the Los, Los Angeles Superior Court judge elected Judge Rickard to be a court commissioner and he served the Los Angeles Mosque Courthouse in West Covina. In 2005, he was appointed to the San Bernardino Superior Court where he currently serves. He has two adult children, married children, and one granddaughter. Welcome, Judge Richard. You bring you, and thank you for being here tonight. I really thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for those, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you for those kind words. A uh, couple of things. Uh, first, 
the time limits are going to be rather rigidly enforced. So if you get your signals from the timekeepers, pay attention to them or I'll be popping up and stopping you. It's a matter of order and it's important to maintain order in the forum that we have as well as civility. The, the chance that you get here to uh, meet and uh, address questions to your city council candidates, I think is unique in the world. Where else can you get to in a, come, come in a forum like this, see and speak to the people who are going to be uh, on the ballot, and if elected, making decisions for this great city. And in my experience, I've lived, uh, grew up in Utah, lived in New York State, uh, New York City when I was going to law school. I've been in California now since 1977. Uh, it's the local representatives who make the biggest difference in your life. It's the local representatives who work with the local school district. It's the local representatives that work with the police department, and the fire department. It's the local representatives that work with the garbage collectors. Uh, it's, it's they who really make the most important difference in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I'm really pleased to see the turnout we have tonight and I'm really pleased to have all of you involved in, the, in this great democracy that we have in, in our country. It doesn't exist anywhere in the world, and else in the world. And I'm thrilled to, to be a part of it tonight and to moderate the candidates forum. Uh, I, I, candidates disagree, that's what they do. People disagree, that's what they do. I always come back to a line from Alexander Hamilton who said that when he was involved with it in a debate, a dispute with one of his other founding fathers, he always believed that the person with whom he had the dispute was as sincere in his, these were all men at the time, his belief as Alexander, Alexander Hamilton was in his and might be right. So keep that in mind as we go through the, uh, the candidates forum tonight. And it's my great pleasure to do an introduction. Please hold your applause. I'm going to introduce everyone, starting from my left here and then moving to my right. The arrangement, <coughs> excuse me, the arrangement is really determined by the Secretary of State's randomized alphabet draw. So this is, as fair as it gets, this is our, the, the essence of our election system. And so I'm going to introduce Muir Davis to my far right. Far left, no, nope, no, nope, please hold your pause. There, we're done, thanks, okay. Uh, Steve Johnson, our incumbent. Uh, Joseph Gabaldon, nope, did I miss? Here's the incumbent. Here's the incumbent, sorry, I knew I'd get this wrong. Mr. Johnson, there we go, is uh, listed as a insurance broker here in Laverne. And then we have Joseph Gabaldon, did I pronounce that correctly? Thank you very much. Uh, business executive and Michelle Kashifo Gita. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. I got it right? America. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, Mr. Gabaldon, a business executive. Mr. Uh, Kashifo Gita uh, has police and military experience. Uh, Tim Hepburn, our incumbent. Rich Gill. Yo. <laughs> me, Rich Gill, a photographer, uh. a videographer, and Estella. Maldonado, a cyber risk engineer. Now let's have a round of applause for all our candidates. Thank you. And so now we'll move to opening statements, three minutes each, starting with Mr. Davis, please. Thank you, Judge. Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for being here and allowing mm -hmm. us to present our visions to you. My name is Muir Davis, and I've been a council member since 2017. The reason I ran for city council is because service is one of my faith-based traditions that's very important to me. And I was able to step up and serve the city of Laverne for the past five years. I grew up in Laverne. Um, it didn't, I wasn't born here like my sister, but I've grown up here most of my life as were, had my parents and their parents before them. My vision for Laverne is about sustainability. I want to make sure that we increase and include and continue our sustainability financially, environmentally, and maintaining our, our, corp, our city culture with maintaining our own services, both public services and public safety. 
I also want to thank my endorsers who have endorsed my candidacy and introduce and thank especially the Laverne Police Officers Association who recently announced that they endorsed my candidacy. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Johnson, please. Good evening. I want to thank all the community members here tonight. Uh, my name is Stephen Frank Johnson. I'm running for city council in District 1. I have a history of service to the community. I am a Laverne business owner. I have been a member of the Laverne Rotary Club for 38 years, serving as president twice. I have, a ser I have served eight years on the Laverne City Council from 2003 to 2011. I have served on the Hillcrest Board for a total of 10 years. My service demonstrates my leadership. I am proud to be endorsed by the Laverne Firefighters Association and the majority of the Benita Unified School District. I am running for office because of a city council action that happened this past November. The council was considering how they would implement district voting. I pleaded to the council to have four districts with an elected mayor. But our council members, Muir Davis, Robin Carter, and Wendy Lau, chose the five district model, eliminating our ability to have an elected mayor. This current model only lets, it, lets us vote every four years for one city representative. I'm going to repeat that point. We will be voting less often and have less representation than we have now. What I was pleading for is a model where we could vote every two years and we would have two city representatives. Furthermore, in 1972, an election was held in Laverne where residents were asked, shall the electors elect a mayor and four city council members? And shall the term of office for mayor be two years or four years? Many residents may remember this election. Laverne voters chose to have an elected mayor for a two-year term. I am here today because I believe every voter in the city should vote for mayor, as voters approved in 1972. These three council members, Muir Davis, Robin Carter, and Wendy Lau, reversed a lawful election without a vote of the people. I aim to restore your right to vote for our elected mayor and increase your representation on the city council. I respectfully ask for your vote representing District 1 as your council member. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Gabaldon, please. Thank you all for coming here tonight. My name is Joe Gabaldon, and I hope to be your next city council member serving all of Laverne. My background is one filled with broad and diverse set of experiences I feel provide me with a perspective that will add value to our city. I was born in East Los Angeles, moved to Temple City, went to high school in Pasadena, and have a degree in business finance and economics. My career journey has afforded me many opportunities for experience and growth, traveling the world, gaining perspective on how people from different places have needs different from the other, yet must all work together to get things done. While my family has moved beyond our years where our children have participated in youth sports here in Laverne, we continue to part our participation when we can. In service, while for many years I commuted over 60 miles each way to go to work, my Laverne was still my place, and I made the time to give back when possible. Over the last 10 years, I've served the community as a scoutmaster for a boy local Boy Scout troop uh, serving Laverne and San Dimas, and in the last two years, I've been volunteering with Meals on Wheels to deliver food to those in need. Sitting on our city council will be the next chapter in how I will look to serve Laverne. Other than passion for all things Laverne, to the council I will bring unique professional skills in all aspects of business, process improvement, technology and finance. I do not feel are totally present and would serve the city well as it works to sustain financial stability in anticipation of economic uncertainty, yet looking for the growth we need. These skills will provide the foundation for the readiness required what the, ne the next decade will bring. In my business and financial systems background, I will work to champion investment in our city relative to the critical improvements in our technology infrastructure. These will be critical to both the efficiencies we'll need of every tax dollar earned while delivering on the capability of being fully transparent. As an independent thinker and a proven leader, coupled with my analytical approach to problem solving, 
I'll work hard to deliver for the community in attitude, teamwork, consistency, and with full explanation of my decision making. Taken from the city's mission statement, the city of Laverne strives to maintain a full range of efficient municipal services to, pre to preserve our hometown charm and quality of life while being responsive to the community's current and emerging needs. I support that. I support financial stability and transparency. I support Laverne Police Department. I support Laverne Fire Department. I support providing city staff what they need to do a great job. I support the neighborhoods and protecting them from avoidable development projects. I support the opportunity to make Gold Line and the Arrow Corridor a success for Laverne. I support to maintain the current zoning status subject to the discretion of the greater homeowner community who surrounds Sierra Laverne. I support maintaining green spaces and parks in Laverne and I support Laverne. Thank you all, and I look forward to hearing your questions tonight. Is there a question for Gita? Go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who has shown up to this event and everyone who's watching in television, the Canada's Forum online or in public access television. My name is Mashal Kashifel Gita. Please call me Cash. I'm a Laverne resident. I'm a husband, a dad, a law enforcement officer, and a major in the United States Army Reserve. As a kid, I went to Roynan, Ramona, and graduated from Bonita. My history and my passion for our city run deep. Both as a dad and as a kid growing up in Laverne, some of my best memories in life were from Laverne. I'm running for city council because I believe that I can make a positive difference for our residents and our council. I believe that public safety needs to be our city's top priorities. I also believe that my experience and knowledge as a law enforcement officer will help our city to turn this goal of public safety into good outcomes for our residents and our businesses. My top priority as a council member will be public safety. I understand public safety. Our cities, as well as many cities in Southern California, have some, some real challenges in crime, violence, and homelessness. In LA County, we have a DA who's not doing his job. I can't tell you how many people I have arrested for serious crimes have been released within a couple hours or days because of his direction of his duty. Our law enforcement officers are doing their job, but this DA's catch and release policies are one of the reasons why crime is rising in our county. We need a DA who'll do their job. And until he's recalled, we need a Laverne City Council that will vote 5-0 with no confidence vote against our incompetent DA. We also have a metro station coming that will open in our city. And if our city does not address our public safety challenge, well, in the near future, our city will see an increase in crime, violence, and homelessness. Our city council needs to look at trespassing and vagrancy and illegal camping laws and policies and our use of our new technologies so that we don't allow the state to make our wonderful community a homeless magnet. We have our, we have our local police, fire, and public works. I'm glad that we have our own services. And as a council member, I will work tirelessly to find grant money for our city. I will also look for work on improving our staffing levels, our staff morale, and our staff recruiting so that we make our city one of the top places to work in our state. And why not us? Finally, there's still a public safety challenge in our juvenile camps. First, I'd like to thank our Mayor Tim Hepburn and all the other people who have fought against our camp being changed into a higher level juvenile detention facility. We mobilize and we convince the LA County Board of Supervisors to look elsewhere for their higher level detention. However, this fight is not over. With our camp not being redesignated, we very well could have a higher level offenders put in our tar camps. These low level inmates are still dangerous and possibly violent. We need to keep working on this issue to turn this juvenile facility into a different type of county resource, such as a fire camp. I am proud to be endorsed by our great mayor, Tim Hepburn, our Laverne Firefighters Association, the Los Angeles County Buildings and Trades, and many other associations. God bless. Thank you. Mr. Hepburn, please. There we go. Well, first of all, I want to thank my wife for letting me do this because um, so. she thinks I'm crazy, but uh, obviously I'm a little crazy, but uh, to do this. But uh, thank you, Patty. She's in the audience tonight. Leslie Simone for my uh, campaign manager and all my other supporters. Um, you know, we t I took over. I've been in uh, city council since 2015 and took over mayorship in 2020. And as soon as 2020 hit, we had COVID. And on the 6th of April, 2020, we basically shut down the whole world. You know, and, it, and it, you could always run and hide from that, but we didn't. As a city, as a community, we all rallied, 
Uh, I started to do Minute with the Mayor, which kept people informed of what was going on. Our city staff, our city manager, our fire police. We worked on uh, basically shutting things down and opening back, back up safely for our people. We worked with our county supervisors for our restaurants to stay open, what could be open, what had to close, and what could be re reopened when time was there. And that was a, a big effort by all of us. But in these last few years, first of all, we've kept our community open. We have a fin we're financially stable now, more so than most communities, because we pushed shopping local, praying local, eating local, and everybody did that, which was wonderful. We closed D Street down to make it better for our businesses in our old town uh, quarter. Um, we also hired a new fire chief. We opened Station 3, which was amazing. We're rebuilding, he's rebuilding our fire department right now. We also, um, we also, as uh, Mr. Califagia said, um, that we stopped the prison from being turned into an SYTF youth facility. That took the entire community and our residents. But it takes a focus and it takes leadership. And that's where I, I come in. I think I've proven myself for my leadership. I, I look forward to, I don't like this uh, five district. I did not vote for the five district. I think that the community should have the right to vote for an elected mayor. The four district council's fine, it would work. But I think the people, the, the rights were taken away, as Mr. Johnson stated in 1972, it was voted in that they would have an elected mayor and that was taken away from us. I don't like how it was done, but I will move forward. And I wanna thank the Laverne Firefighters Association for their support. I wanna thank the Laverne Coalition of Concerned Citizens. I wanna thank the most of the Benita Unified uh, School Board members. Uh, I'm very active, I'm very concerned. I believe in public safety. I believe in uh, financial stability. Our city is now financially stable. We have a $600,000 surplus when we are gonna be negative. I think that's very important. But the most important thing is the residents have a seat at the table. And I think that's one of the things that I am so proud of, the fact that when we had an issue like Applebaugh Page, we made a few phone calls and people came out to rally. We told our little, little town of Laverne of 32,000 some odd people rose up and they said, oh my gosh, Laverne is an amazing place and we're not gonna put a prison here. So thank you all, I appreciate your support. Mr. Gill, please. Yes, good evening. If you don't know me, wow. But uh, my name is Rich Gill. For many of you, I usually do the videos for the city council. And I'm usually the one that does the high def in the back where you actually think that you're sitting there. I chose to run this year because like many of the people that are up here, I feel that we were all wronged. When we lost the ability to vote for mayor, I was infuriated. I thought that was wrong. When I found out how more and more people did not know that they lost their right to vote for mayor, I felt that they were also cheated. And then when I heard about in 1972 that the people voted into law, they wanted that right to vote. How can that law be changed in a three to two? How is that possible? I want that answered by somebody in legal. Many of the people in Laverne still do not know that they have lost their right to vote for mayor. Many of them are going to find out when they don't have their ballots. This is insane. In July 6th, when this all started, and Mr. Mrs. Muir and Mr. Car uh, Car Carter and Muir began the process. They said they would notify the public. Were you notified? No. I wasn't notified. And that's bona fide. All right. I even, when the Daily Bulletin talked to me today, what? I said to the Daily Bulletin, did you people even tell or distribute the information out? And they said, well, we did as much as we could. And I said, 
40% of the darn city doesn't even know. So how is this possible? This has to be fixed. And this year, you get to fix it. And fix it the right way. We are. All right, thank you. And now, Ms. Maldonado, please. <coughs> thank you. Go ahead. Good evening, Laverne. And thank you for your time to come out and meet uh, me and the other candidates and, and as we get to share with you some of the more important matters in our city of Laverne. And also thank you to the clerk, Lupe Estrella, and Judge Reichert for facilitating this event. Your important work means that democracy is alive and well in our town. When I became a single parent with two young sons and needed to buy a home um, for our family, I looked everywhere and my final decision was Laverne. And it was the best decision of my adult, adult life. That was 23 years ago. As soon as possible, my sons were enrolled in educational classes and youth sports that are provided by the city. I depended on those services. It, it helped me be, you know, give them a good childhood. I joined in the fun and volunteered as coach for basketball and t-ball. And then when they started with AYSO soccer, I put on my cleats and continued the fun as a referee. Uh, my children were uh, fortunate enough to go through the public school system, first at Oak Mesa, uh, Ramona, Bonita, where um, they obtained a high quality education and for that we're grateful. When they discovered their passion for water polo, I once again joined, took on the Bearcat spirit and became team mom for the uh, water, boys water polo team, was an active member of the board of directors in the Boosters Club. Near and dear to my heart, I also participated every year in the Bonita Career Day. You know, we need to share with the children what's out there after high school. And also participated as an evaluator in the PACE program, evaluating senior projects. What I offer Laverne is I'm a technologist of 30 years experience. I've been successful in my job uh, for some of the reasons that you're gonna learn today. When I started, I became, um, I started my career as a technology consultant for local municipalities, cities like Monterey Park, Santa Fe Springs, Westminster, uh, Paramount Commerce, to name a few. It was at that time that I really got to learn how a city is run and managed, but from the back end, from behind the scenes. I then moved to private industry, primarily with uh, the medical and the financial industries where there is high oversight and a high expectation of accountability. Fiscal responsibility is important to me and it is important to the city. And I'm used to working in that environment. I am, here, I am here running for city council because as I spoke to many of my neighbors, not just in district four, but also around the city, I learned that I agree with a lot of the um, items that are important to them. Things like the inflow to our city of the homeless and the public safety concerns with the up, um, upcoming arrival of the train station. The city is about to go into a growth spurt, and we in the city council need to be ready to come up with solutions that are going to fix the problems of today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, candidates. Uh, <clears throat> a couple of uh, things uh, came to my attention. <clears throat> First, please turn your cell phones off. <laughs> uh, I, let me check mine. Uh, I had it go off in court once. It was, my ringtone was Homer Simpson saying, phone's well, ringing, pick up the phone. Phone's ringing, that was embarrassing. So I've checked mine, please uh, check yours to make sure they're off. Uh, second, uh, we uh, going into the uh, questions session now, and if you have a question, uh, we, you can write them out during the course of, of the event and hold them up, and we have runners who will pick them up. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. I see someone with one holding, one right here. So here comes a runner to pick it up right now. Thank you very much. You, oh, hold it up. Yeah, hold it up above your head. There we go. Otherwise, we can't see it. There we go. So uh, keep that in mind during the course of the evening. And then uh, we're going to go into a session of questions, the same question for each candidate. I would request that you not applaud after the, uh, each candidate answers the question. We'll have a round of applause at the end of the round. 
but uh, hope, please hold your pause uh, so that we can maintain an orderly response to the question. Because the first question is really a two-part question. And uh, the candidates can, in my view, answer either or both parts. Um, so the first part of the question is, what is your plan for our unho unhoused population? That's the first part of the question. The second part is, with the extension of the gold line, there is concern that our unhoused population may increase. What steps would you take to address this in order to provide necessary services for this population while maintaining public safety and quality of life for our residents? Do you want me to re repeat that again? It was kind of long. No, we got there, that. Here we got it? Okay, no, all right, I just want to make sure. Okay, so let's start with Mr. Uh, Davis, please. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, I agree that the unhoused population is a challenge, um, and a, even a bigger challenge for us is those that are on the precipice of losing their housing. Housing in California is a very critical and important issue that we need to address by building more houses. Um, one of the ways we're going to be able to build more houses is with the transit-oriented transit, transit -oriented district down around where the metro, link, metro station's coming in to serve Laverne. We're going to be building medium and high density housing around the station and creating a station that has the dynamic of both retail and residential there so it'll be a vibrant station to address the concerns folks have about metro bringing in additional unhoused folks the station it will be designed in a way that will be inviting to visitors who want to come and visit the university or fairplex or even old town but it'll be dynamic in its design in nature such that any transients that want to get off the station won't be able to find a place to hide and go to sleep. So they'll move on to a different station. However, in addition to that, because some, some increase may happen, there will be some marginal amount of people with the transit-oriented district and the enhanced infrastructure financing that we'll have there, we'll be able to recruit and hire additional uh, police and fire services as well as public services to address that slight increase in transient and homeless population. Fortunately for Laverne, we have relationships with Tri-City Mental Health as well as Hope for Home where our outreach from the police department can reach out and help those people who are looking for lodging and need a place to stay. I'm certain that we'll also have additional resources up here as we continue to grow that area. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Mr. Johnson? Thank you. Um, Muir said it pretty well as far as what we plan with the facility and what we expect, but um, I don't have any answer as to how to create or how to solve the homeless problem. Um, that problem is going to be with us for quite some time um, until we can get affordable housing for people, until we correct their mental health issues, until we provide them some sort of basic services so they can clean themselves, so they can at least take care of themselves. I don't have that answer. If I did, I wouldn't be here. Um, <laughs> Uh, but we do have to be very reactive and on top of the situation to handle issues as they arise. And our police, our fire, our Tri-City Mental Health all have to work together um, to solve these problems as they occur. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gabaldon. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I mean, Mr. Gabaldon, next, please. Thank you. Um, it's a complicated question for sure because this is not something that uh, most of us can control individually. This will take a team effort. It'll take planning, thoughtful consideration for all the variables. I think that um, when you consider that we have the best weather on the planet here in Southern California and we have uh, a state that is friendly to inviting and funding these um, kind of lifestyles, then we are definitely up against something that is much bigger than Laverne. But what can Laverne do for itself? We can look to each other and anticipate where it is these problems will exist. I think when I talked about technology earlier, I think that the advancement of technology, having the opportunity to click on your phone with an app that says, I see somebody there that shouldn't belong there, that's an example of something that we can do if we want to be proactive. I think that we need to engage the community in what it is the issues are and what it is that we're doing. 
I think that we need to support the city uh, and the services along with the police department and our partners and what they're doing because those are the important things that are working. We're very sensitive to what we see, but we don't often know what's going on to make it as good as it is. Uh, Yvonne, um, that, that works for the city, she works with the police department to manage these things on a day-to-day -day basis. They keep track of these people. These are important small steps, and to continue these partnerships, to be thoughtful, proactive, and to look forward into what it is that these, these obstacles will become, I think are important. I think as it, rel as it relates to Gold Line, I think in working with the MTA and Gold Line, uh, who are looking to fund or defund in some, place, some ways uh, police activity, uh, on the trains is one place to go for funding down the road. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kashifogita, please. Thank you, Your Honor. This is not an issue of homelessness. This is an issue of mental health and drug abuse. Make no mistake about it. If you build it, they will come. I am very compassionate. I'm a God-fearing man, and I understand. But the issue with the homeless population here that it will come to Laverne, well, it's going to come not just from the, the gold line. Of course, that's going to be here but it's already existing. We have to have a plan in place. Understand that we only have three officers and a sergeant on patrol at any given time. How do you address some of these issues with the, with the homeless? How do you sit there and take one person, you gotta take them to county hospital, medical and book, whatever violation that they may have or seen, and you have one officer down. Now you have two other officers on patrol. You just don't have the resources available. My mission, my opportunity, I wanna get as much grant money as I can for our first responders here in Laverne. Right, to address the issue of additional policing and first response for our firefighters. Because when that gold line comes, you better believe there's gonna be several medical calls coming. More and more people will talk. Hey, come to Laverne, why not? Let them take care of you here. Again, I'm a very compassionate man. I fear God and I understand. So the issue again, is not about homelessness. It's not about that. It's about, the, it's about the crime and the violence that will come to it. Look at the cities of Azusa, look at the cities of Monrovia, look at around those transient centers and you will see countless days and times that people have overtaken those areas. And that's not fair for the people that live there. That's not fair for the people that have their businesses there. Right now, if you go, you've seen downtown Laverne, you'll see, you'll see many homeless that are sleeping on the side. Some of these businesses, occupying some. Do you, your voice not matter? Do you not pay your taxes? Do you not have the opportunity to live here free of any crime and violence? I, and I'm looking forward to God willing getting as much as I can from the city, the county, sorry, the county, state, and federal government to address these issues. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hepburn, please. Um, a lot of my partners here up on the desk, Mr. Uh, Cash and Mr. Johnson uh, and Mr. Gabaldon. The issue with the homeless is the fact that we do have really good services for the homeless. Uh, our police department, our fire department, Tri-City Mental Health that was mentioned. The problem is, is that the homeless issue, as Mr. As Cash had stated, is the fact that we have mentally ill and drug abuse. And they have more rights right now than we do, as a fact that they, they do not have to go if they don't want to. And I know that the governor is working on what's called a CARE Act, which will give guardianship, hopefully, to the, us as an entity here. If we have a homeless individual that has a mentally ill issue or a drug issue, that we'll be able to take guardianship and put them in some, some type of sustainable uh, place where they can, we can protect them. Because right now it's difficult because if they don't want to go, they don't have to go. And it's very, very difficult. Same people, we all see it in Laverne, I see it every day, I see new people now. And it's very frustrating to me, but we're doing the best we can with the tools we have. Uh, number two, the gold line. Yes, it is going to bring that uh, population to our community, but we're planning for that, as uh, Mr. Davis has stated, uh, our Enhanced Infrastructure Financing District, which is a financing district in the Arrow Corridor where the gold line is. And that's going to spur development. With that development, it's going to come fees. With those fees, we're going to staff up on our police department and our fire department to make sure that we keep our residents and those people that are visiting our city safe. And that's very important. But until we can address the mentally ill and the drug abuse situation, this homeless population is going to stay and continually stay. And um, we're working on that. Hopefully, the governor can get his uh, act together and get us some kind of a tool for our police department, fire department, so we can take these people and put them in a safe environment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gill? Well, a lot of people have already discussed it, but I think what they really haven't noticed or haven't said is that it's going to get worse. And it's not just going to be the current homeless. It's going to be a lot of people that you know. I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of stocks. And it's been a bloodbath. 
I tried to jump out my window, but it was only one story, so my, my gardener looked at me kind of funny when I fell. Couldn't do anything about it. But the fact is, there are more seniors and more people that are literally going to be in a situation where they're going to be homeless. They may be friends, they may be family, they may be people that you know, and we're going to have to figure out a way to deal and help them. We are going to see a lot of homeless come off this goal line because they ride for free. And yes, a lot of them do have mental issues and drug abuse. But this ride is going to get so much worse and we have to be able to learn and adjust. And we're going to have to realize that it's not just them. It could be someone you love. So you really have to think about when you see a person out there on the street, that's somebody's brother, that's somebody's cousin. So don't look at them the wrong way. Look at them with care and respect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Maldonado. Thank you. About four or five years ago, we here experienced one of the coldest, wettest winters. I went around to neighbors in the city and even outside. Do you have any jackets, tents, sleeping bags, collecting, passing them out? As much as I wanted to help, that was not the solution. The solution is uh, not even necessarily, you know, this, this is not just a, a Laverne problem. This is a nationwide problem. And in, use, in recent years, I understand that the city tried to address this by uh, tr creating this collaboration with Tri-City Mental and the Union Station Homeless Services. But I'm gonna say one thing, it has not helped because they keep, uh, the inflow keeps growing. As the mayor stated as well, he's recognized it, it hasn't really worked. What we need to do is we need to look at and tap on larger resources. We need to be knocking at the door constantly of our county supervisor, Catherine Barger, and organizations like LASA, the Los Angeles um, Homeless Safe Services Authority, they have the funds, they have the means, that's what they do, and we need to have them help us. Um, as far as the incoming flow stemming from the train station, I can tell you that for work, my company is um, headquartered in San Francisco, so often you'll find me on the train going from Sacramento, San Francisco, Oakland. I've learned to identify a, a really nice train station. It's clean, well-staffed, well-lit, and then there's the, the stations that are not that, where it, you know colleagues would tell me, don't get off there because you're gonna get in trouble. We need to ensure that our train station, which is coming here in less than two years, it needs to be a good train station to continue to invite uh, visitors and guests and it needs to be a positive pillar in our society, in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Round of applause for our candidates. For this <laughs> Thank you. Well, we've been, <clears throat> excuse me, here about 45 minutes, and I remembered what I forgot, and that's that we should have started with the Pledge of Allegiance. Here's our flag. Would you please all rise and pledge allegiance to our flag of our great country? So everyone rise. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. All right, now this is the second round of questions to all seven candidates. And uh, give me just a minute. Okay, okay, this is another good question. Uh, what are the top two or three most important issues for the city council in the next two years for which you may need to vote and, and support or not support? So I'll read that again, because again, it's a, kind of a, another long question. What are the top two or three most important issues for the city council in the next two years for which you may need to vote for or against. Got it? 
Everybody? Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. So again, let's start with Mr. Davis to my far left. Thank you very much. So I believe that the top two or three issues that our city is going to face in the next few, several years that city council is going to need to address are basically centered around the metro station that's coming to Laverne. We need to make sure that we have a sustainable plan financially that, can, that utilizes the enhanced infrastructure financing as well as the policy that we've created around the station for the transit oriented district to facilitate and support residents who want to move into medium and high density area and use public transportation and alternative transportation so they don't need cars. There, are, there is a significant amount of population that's learning that life without a car isn't anti-Southern California. It's doable and can be pleasant. So we want to make sure that that area is inviting to residents as well as inviting to visitors of Laverne and make sure that, the, that there are services that are in and around that area so that when people come home, they don't need to jump in their car and drive two miles to get whatever they need. They need to have those services in that area. And creating that vibrant area will add a fourth place in Laverne at Foothill, University, Old Town, Fairplex, and then the transit station will be a vibrant area for the community. And we can leverage then off of that, um, that, that uh, area to increase and encourage other parts of Laverne to increase their active transportation, which would then support active transportation and environmental sustainability. And again, all of that needs to feed both financing and to make sure that we have the public services and public safety revenue to continue to support our locally managed city services. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Johnson. Uh, my number one priority is going to be trying to get the elected mayor back to the residents, uh, to put that on the ballot, to have a four district model uh, and let residents vote and make that decision. That's going to be my top priority as a, as a new city council member. Um, beyond that, um, housing is always going to be an issue. Um, we've got the Airbnb issues in areas that it doesn't always work out with other neighbors. Um, we've got issues at Sierra Laverne um, with whether or not housing will go there. Uh, personally, I want to see that maintained as open space, but that's always going to be an issue that's looming. Um, so housing and the elected mayor are my two main issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Gabaldon, please. I think there's way more than three issues or two issues or one big issue facing Laverne. I think the, the very first one has to be financial stability. Uh, from that, what all good things will come. We have to anticipate that our, in our current economy that there will be challenges and we're going to have to be making smart decisions about where we spend our money. Uh, we have not been generating revenue uh, at the rate that our population has aged uh, to you know, pay for the things that we want to have in Laverne. So it's going to take smart minds, people that are considerate of details and understand of what we need. So I think the finances are critical. I think the the propensity to, to drive success is gonna come through development in the city that drives the tax revenue. So I think business development has to be a key focus. That'll go along the Foothill Corridor and the Arrow Corridor. The development along the Arrow Corridor is gonna be important because that's the next big growth area for the city. It has to be done right. It cannot be done haphazardly. It has to have a plan that anticipates what it is the needs in that area will be to ensure that the city services that go to that area are not disproportionately available to that area in its early stages and it, it's sacrificed in the middle to the northern part of the city. And I think that generally speaking, housing in the city, it, is it gonna be a challenge because we're up against the, the 800 pound gorilla in Sacramento? But I think if we take a proactive approach to smartly anticipating where those issues will sit in the city, I think we'll be okay. But I, I would like to maintain a characteristic of Laverne that exists today in that new day. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Kashvagita, please. Thank you, Your Honor. The many issues that we face here in this city all come down to my opinion is public safety. We don't have a public safety professional in our city council. We need one. We need to have a balance. 
to understand that the future here in our city is going to be a positive change, God willing. And I'm looking forward for that positive change. With, it, with that comes what absolutely money and funding. I understand businesses. I understand that we need to have an increased amount of money to, to pay for these services. But the services that we have right here and now are good, but we can get and make them better. With that, with the police and fire and our public works, I will champion and continue to advocate to get the grant money that we need from the county, from the state, from the federal government to provide you that the safety that you need. How many times, and I look around in this room, you can talk to so many people that are victims of crime, day in and day out. It's something that I see on a constant basis in the neighbors that I talk to. Whether it's the catalytic converter thefts or the home break-ins, it's happening more and more. We need to increase our public safety. We need to have more officers on patrol. And I, and I really want to thank the seniors that volunteer for, that for our community. I appreciate you. I look forward to even helping you and finding a way we can get you out there and doing more patrols. I think that some of the things that they need are more vehicles to increase that patrol. I appreciate when I see the volunteer service guy get out there. I started here as a police cadet. I have started here in 1995. This is something that I really champion and I love. I will do everything I can to protect this city everything I can in my power to continue to provide you safe so you can go home safe. So when you leave your house and you go to work, you know that your house is safe. So when you have your businesses, you operate your businesses and those that come to our communities here know that it's a safe community. And that we can be just like those other cities. And why not us? One of the top safe cities in the nation. I look forward to serving you City Council. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Hepburn, please. Well, they kind of touched on a number of the issues, but I think the most important thing, without financial stability, we don't have a city. And uh, I think over the last few years, even with COVID, as I stated in my opening statements, that that's the most important thing we need to think about. Because financial stability spreads out through everything. It goes through the police, it goes through fire, it goes through public works, it goes for our employees in the city, it goes for the services that we provide. Uh, right now, we're revamping our, uh, our fee structure, uh, as uh, Mr. Davis had stated, the uh, L line, gold line, or whatever they're going to call it when it comes here to the new station, they keep changing the name, is going to spur um, uh, economic development. With that development comes fees, and with those fees comes the structure that we can <clears throat> be more stable on. And I, we're working on that right now. We're changing our fee structure as a city, our city's management's on top of that. That's probably the most important thing to, uh, that bolsters all of the city in order to afford the services that our residents and myself expect. Um, and number two is probably one of the most important things is the historical value of our community. To keep the historical value of our community, our homes, our historic downtown, any historic structure we should try to keep. Uh, as we morph through these next few years, uh, I think that uh, the, uh, we've saved a few historical value homes. I know that Linda Wilkinson has saved one and moved one. I think it's very important. We need to keep the roots of our community along with modernizing, along with uh, some affordable housing that we can do in our community. Um, and I think that's extremely important and we must focus on that at all times. And number three uh, is actually the um, water. We need to get together with the, the state and with the governor and to figure out how in the heck we're gonna get sustainable water supply so we don't have to keep going back in drought situations. And then also we need to elect a mayor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Hold your applause, please, to the end. Uh, Mr. Gill. Top three, right? Ready for? Three, three, four? Three. 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 Mm. All right. <clears throat> well, I mean, a lot of people have so far touched on everything, kind of being the, what, what am I, the sixth one down? But again, as some of us have already stated, we need to go ahead and make the change to the four district. We need to go ahead and change to a voting mayor. Those are the priorities in my book. The water is an issue that we will have to look at. That's inevitable, especially of us, those of us that have pools. People are going to be looking at those really harshly when the time comes. And some of us, especially the Foskland people, we're not on the same water that the residents of the actual city are, which is unique, but it is. So we're also going to be hit with this, a little bit more of a different view, but it's still going to be the same thing. It's all going to be everybody. We also have to look at, and has been stated, the gold line as it goes ahead and gets coming in in the next two years. But hopefully it does bring in more than just people that are looking for a place 
to sit and stay a while. Hopefully it does bring in people that want to be able to go to our downtown. Wow, 30 seconds, I'm fast. So in conclusion, let's go ahead and let's get our mayor back to being voted on. Thank you, sir. Ms. Maldonado. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, very pressing are, of course, things that we've already talked about, the inflow of the homeless, the unhoused, and the train station, the public safety. So I'll go on to what I, I think are the next um, items of concern. There's, uh, with the train station, there's going to be a growth spurt. There's going to be additional housing. There's going to be additional businesses. I think the city needs to start thinking and designing and, and, and managing that growth. Uh, in order to um, make sure it's effective and it still it doesn't create any additional pro uh, problems for the city. Problems that the city is having is already, for example, we're entering a third year of a drought. As much as I love the gardens on my, uh, the roses in my garden, because my grandmother, uh, Felicitas, who's here, she planted roses everywhere. As much as I love them, I'm really thinking, you know, this has got to change. I, you know, they take up a lot of water. Um, we need to educate our residents in better ways. Um, it's, not, it's not just good enough to keep raising the price. I pay a lot of money in water fees. We need to educate our, our residents on how to become, you know, adopt sustainable options that will keep us going forward um, without sacrificing uh, the way of life that we're used to. The other, um, the other item that for me I don't really hear a lot about is innovative solutions for our residents. I've mentioned, for example, charging stations. Electric cars are not a thing of the future. They're here. And, they're, and the technology and, and the car batteries, for example, they can charge fully in under an hour. That technology is coming. We need to be prepared for it. That's an example. We need innovative solution, um, solutions that will help our residents here maintain a good life, uh, quality of life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Round of applause for our family. <laughs> Give me just a moment, please. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> all right, so we're uh, changing the format slightly. We're going to continue with questions to all candidates. And so you'll each have three minutes. Three or two three. minutes, sorry, two minutes, sorry. <laughs> we'll each have two minutes on this round. Okay, thanks. We adapt to changing circumstances. Okay, here we go. Give me just a moment. <laughs> Who, what? <laughs> sorry. Oh, thanks. I'm okay, thanks. There was a lot of uh, marginalia on this uh, particular question. I was trying to uh, read through. So I'm finally ready to read the question. Here we go. If elected, will you be active and support the mission of the Cultural Awareness and Social Inclusion, CASI Community Based Committee? Question one. Question two. Do you pledge to make Laverne an inclusive, welcoming city to all individuals? And if so, how? So let me read that, that again, because it's another two and a half part question. If elected, <clears throat> will you be active and support the mission of the Cultural Awareness and Social Inclusion, CASI Community Based Committee? Do you pledge to make Laverne an inclusive, welcoming city to all individuals? If so, how? So let's start with Mr. Muir, please. Uh, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Judge. Um, yes, I absolutely will support the Cultural Awareness and Social Inclusion Committee as I am currently a member on it and I would want to maintain that membership there. I believe that we're making a good progress in the committee to encourage and, and create Laverne as more of a welcoming and a community for all, all residents and all walks in California. Um, that's that's not only consistent with what I'm doing with the city, but it's also consistent with my faith-based tradition and our church and being a, an inclusive community. So it, inclusion is very important and making sure that residents and visitors are welcome is also very important to me. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Uh, Johnson, please. Thank you. Um, Muir and I belong to the same church, so we have that faith-based mission or as a part of our mission, uh, to be inclusive um, with the community. 
um, and welcoming. Uh, that is part of the Church of the Brethren's mission. Um, as far as the Cassie group, I'm not that familiar with it, so I'd have to get educated on exactly what the Cassie group is trying to do before I could make a logical conclusion as to what I would support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Gabaldon, please. I think uh, as a uh, Latino from East LA, I kind of live the life of uh, cultural awareness and the necessity for it. I grew up uh, understanding that, um, you know, face forward. So absolutely, I support it. Um, I think that we all uh, look to be inclusive in any way that we can, but I believe that Laverne is culturally aware. I believe Laverne is socially inclusive, and I think there's always room for improvement. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Kashyapavita, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I serve God, I serve country, I serve family, and I will serve all of you. I don't care where you're from. I don't care who you believe in. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're an independent. You live here in Laverne, I will serve you. That is my job. That is my job here in Laverne. I am your voice. Please put all this madness aside. We are a community of one. We stood together when they wanted to build that prison. We didn't care where we were from. We're all immigrants. I joined the United States Army and then my brothers and sisters to my left and right were black, white, Hispanic, Asian. I don't care. They served with me and they still serve with me. My law enforcement first responder, brothers and sisters, we don't ask each other what you're from or who, what you believe in. We're here to fight against evil. And I will continue to do that to the last breath in my body. I'm tired of the nonsense. I'm here to serve. I want you to be with me. I don't care where you're from. I've knocked on every single door and I made a pledge to you that the 500, if I get elected, God willing, that the money that I get, I'm gonna donate it to the churches here in Laverne. It's not much, but you know what? I wanna give back to the community that's given me so much. I will continue to do that. My other pledge to you that I told you, I will still come knocking on your door. I got thick skin. It's okay. You can say what you want. Doesn't affect me. I'll ask you, same questions over again. Here's the issue, sir and ma'am. Do you agree? Yes, no, or don't care? It's still a democracy, and I'm your vote. So whatever you, the majority say is what I'm gonna do. So again, please give me the chance to serve you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hepburn? We've formed a number of committees since I've been on council. Uh, the Active Transportation Committee, the LV uh, Measure, LV measure uh, Committee, and also the Cassie Group. Uh, I support any group that uh, makes sure that all of our residents are included in anything we do. And that has to do with uh, uh, transparency, with uh, open governance, and uh, all inclusive. Um, I raised my children that way. I've lived in this community over 39 years, raised all my children. And I think we have a wonderful community. I think we all accept everyone. And I think as uh, uh, Cash had said, and uh, Mr. Johnson, and uh, uh, Mr. Gabaldon, and Mr. Davis, that uh, we're not perfect but we're a darn good community to live in, and I think all of us appreciate and all of us accept anyone into their home, and I think that's very important for us. But you know, we can always do better, so let's always work on that. But uh, uh, I believe our community is a wonderful community. I think we're all inclusive. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gill. Boy, sorry about that, Mike. As a Mexican, for years, and even to this day, I've always had a community of everybody. And I've never denied anybody anything. So this question is kind of off when everybody on this stand should recognize and accept everybody. Laverne has been a pretty open city. It's been that way as far as I remember since 76. And I've never had any issues with anybody. And to this day, when I videotape the city council, I don't segregate. It's for everybody. All you have to do is turn on LVTV, turn on YouTube, and watch on. You want to watch something? Be my guest. You want to come to the back and watch me videotape? Cop a seat, shake my hand, 
No problem here. Compared to other states that I've been to, <clears throat> Alabama, <laughs> when you walk into some of these places as a Mexican, it is very unique when the place stops. And I mean literally everyone stops. Here it's not that way. California's not that way. We've never been that way that I'm aware of. We've always been fair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Ms. Maldonado, please. As a Latina woman raising her two children in Laverne, I've never had any kind of bad experience. That's part of the reason that, that I feel so welcome, so safe in this city. Now, having said that, I will say that you know, it's great that we celebrate 4th of July and, you know, pancakes oh, served by the Boy Scouts, but it would also be nice to celebrate some of the other cultures. Um, you know, my Mexican heritage is very important to me. That's why I've kept it alive with my family as my parents and my grandmother are sitting here um, did with, with me and my siblings. I've been endorsed by the women uh, the National Women Political Caucus. And one of the things that I feel is very important through their endorsement is the fact of they're very big on inclusivity and they're very big on also uh, giving mm, women their voice. I think that it would be important for the residents to have a woman of color sitting at the city council table. Some of the ideas, uh, you know, stemming from my upbringing and my culture could very well be of benefit to the rest of the, the city. Um, as far as Cassie, I am not a member, but everything, every time I hear about it, I think it's a great organization. Um, as far as inclusion, I am right now, as part of uh, just, you know, volunteerism that I'm involved with in my company, I am the head of the um, Women at Delta, which is an inclus inclusion group um, so around dealing with topics that are important to women and women allies, as well as the, I'm also very active in the, in a group that um, is, deals with uh, Latin and Hispanic topics. So yes, inclusivity for me is a must. Thank you very much. Well, it's come to my attention that I followed my ancestors with following orders, and I've done. The, I've addressed the candidates in the same order each time, which I'm going to stop now. So, uh, so uh, be aware that uh, I'm going to pick one of you. I'm thinking of a number between one and fifty. No, I'm going to pick one of you, uh, and then we'll go for, start with that person and go around. Judge, I was simply going to suggest for the second half you could just go the other direction. Well, that might work too, but let me do it random okay, because certainly. I think randomness has a certain quality to it that I appreciate, even though it's contrary to my upbringing. So uh, give me just a moment. Here, here, so I'm going to start with you, Ms. Maldonado. I'm going to warn you, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, here's the question. What is your plan to improve communications to all, and that's underlined twice, all residents? Some do not use social media or visit online portals or get a newspaper. So I'm going to read that again. What is your plan to improve communications to all residents? Some do not use social media or visit online portals or get a newspaper. So Ms. Maldonado, you're up first this time. I run out of time when you ask for the top uh, concerns, <laughs> but that would have been very next in my list of concerns. When I found out that the city went as far as having a, a health clinic to help facilitate vaccinations for COVID, I'm a cancer survivor and I'm supposed to be on a priority list. It took me days to find uh, my vaccine. I'd never heard of the, the, the health clinic. It's a wonderful idea. I commend the city and, and everybody who put that together, but I never heard about it, unfortunately. Um, I think that, true, not everybody is on social media, uh, but I think that we cannot deny it. I'm going around right now canvassing, knocking on doors, but that's a very slow moving way of communicating. I know that the city likes to um, think that through city council meetings and minutes and even videos, 
But not everybody has time for that. When I was raising my two little kids, I didn't have time for that. I was keeping my head above water. Mm -hmm. I do, however, started to reply and sign, you know, ballots and letters of concern, uh, directing them to organizations that are decision makers, um, to Congress, for example, because I receive a little text on my phone. Click here, sign it, 30 seconds later, I'm done. I've done my civic duty. We have a myriad of ways of communicating, online, um, through phone, um, paper. I think we just need to really be more focused, maybe even survey what is really giving the best response here in the city. Again, it's not the best solution if it's not addressing the need. We need to know what works best for our, our residents here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Davis. Thank you. Certainly with this age of information and the different rates of, of speed that information can travel, communication is challenging for everyone all the time, even in businesses or between family members, because sometimes you're in the loop of the distribution and sometimes you're out of the loop of distribution. And it is indeed a challenge for families, neighbors, and our community. I think we're gonna need to make sure that we have an engaging method so that folks can understand how they prefer to get their information, but it's also incumbent on the, on the residents to get that information and find it because if you take a slow method, for instance, we recently started to produce our community uh, uh, offerings for classes in print again because a lot of people were missing those. Well, if you're waiting for that to arrive and then you see the courses that are being offered, the courses could very well have already been signed up because those people who are using the internet may have seen that class three days earlier and already signed up for a class. So I don't see us being able to necessarily eliminate the challenges immediately, but I think we do need to focus on addressing them and encouraging everyone to be engaged in a way that helps the city know what's the best way to communicate with me. So it really is a two-way street. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Um, we're in an age where communication is all around us. We get bombarded with texts, with emails, with alerts, this, that, and everything else. Um, what the city can do is use its multiple sources that it already communicates with us. We get a, most of us get a water bill, not everybody. Um, the rec mailers that um, get sent out as far as the recreational opportunities, um, text alerts for urgent situations, um, and anything else that's going to come next. I mean, there's always going to be some other level of communication that we need to be addressing. Um, and I think we need to do it all. Every, every outlet out there, we need to inform residents what's going on. Um, there are a lot of people that are just finding out that they don't get to vote for mayor. Um, I've been knocking on a lot of doors and that just kind of makes people dumbfounded. What do you mean we don't get to vote for mayor? But, you know, the city did its job, what it's responsible for doing by posting it electronically and uh, sticking an agenda on, on the front door of City Hall, um, but most residents don't see that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gabaldon, please. Well, I think if you've been watching the city council meetings for the last couple of years, you know that I've been participating and have seen this uh, for myself. Uh, and I have already spoken out about the need to be uh, better communicators to the community. I think that there is a lot of different people in our city. We are diverse. We have different age populations that get their news differently. And we need to be considered all those people and how it is that they'd like to receive their information. I believe that the city, it's the city's responsibility to find a way how to reach the community. So in that, I think the mailers, the emails, the text alerts, things like that, they're all great, but you gotta be committed to doing it for the betterment of the community. I think an idea that I think is well past our, our, our time now is we should have a sign up of some way now with our website, through all the technologies that we have to get every citizen in the, in the city of Laverne to want to sign up to provide a mechanism, whether it's a phone number, an email address, something that we could push out alerts into the community to let them know what's going on, whether it's just news, events, or if there's emergencies in the neighborhoods like the foothills where there could be a fire in the middle of the night that people need to be aware of. 
So I think there's a lot of opportunity, but the, but the real opportunity here is for the city to commit itself to engaging with the community and having the community understand why it's important for them to come back and work with the city on these things. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Casaflagita, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Communication is the key, I understand it. One of the programs out there currently right now is, for most people don't know, there's, there's a government program that offers seniors uh, ability to have free internet and a free uh, laptop. So this is a form of communication that I think that is really important to get our seniors involved. I know that a lot of seniors have their grandkids that like to be able to communicate with them, and who doesn't really have a phone nowadays, right? The problem is, we, how do we get that information out to the people? Most people in this room don't even know that these programs exist. So communication is the key. Communication could also be a failure if you don't implement it. Right? We have to have that dedication to, in order to communicate. How quick were we to understand in some cases when the county sent out its mailers to everybody else that we're going by district and all of a sudden the uproar happens. So other resources are available for utilize us to be able to communicate. Right? Let's not forget it. One of my other plans I like to do, I've knocked on every single door. And if you weren't there, you saw my shiny face on the card. Right? Probably scares away the mice and everything else around there, but it's not a problem. It's okay. You know what I mean? So I'm able to communicate. My pleasure, again, was to you to come out there to the communities to talk to you, let you know, sir, ma'am, this is what's happening in your community. How do you feel? How can we move forward? I understand not everybody has internet capabilities, but I know moving towards the future, it's something that's very needed. And you know what? I take care of my seniors, because my dad's a senior, and you know, one day I'm gonna be one too. And I look forward to seeing a younger gentleman from Laverne or woman be able to have the ability to come represent me and have me in my mind. Right, to protect and to serve. That is my goal, that is my commitment to you. So I understand the mailers, I understand the communication, but it is a two-way street. It is having the ability for you to at least listen to me. At least I wanna to listen to you, I got no problem, but I always wanna get you the information. And having team captains designated in the area, I believe, I know so many people that have so many different, in, in their neighborhoods with the different neighborhood watch programs or the different homeowner associations that be able to talk in their the people that are there and can get back to me. As we call in the Army, force multipliers. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hepburn. You know, when I first got on and, and ran my campaign, uh, social media was a thing of I didn't really understand it. Well, that changed quickly. And I think the last three to four years has been amazing as far as social media, whether it be f smartphones, whether it be websites. Our city has redesigned our website. It's going to become easier for people to, to follow it to click, uh, click, click on buttons for information for whatever our community services department, our community development department. Our fire department has their own web page. Our police department has a web page. Uh, the problem is, is access to the, uh, some of the individuals that do not have any capability. And I think that's something that has to be in a mailer like we do for our water bills. Uh, it's very important. Uh, it's a difficult one, though, because we have to get out to the masses. But I think most people um, rely on um, Channel 3 is another one that's really good, but I think most people rely on their smartphones. And I think that's one of the biggest things because I know I push out stuff all the time with Minute with the Mayor, and it's well received, but it also goes to Instagram, it also goes to all the other web posters, but again, it doesn't go to everyone. And I think that's something we need to work on as a city to find out those community members, as Mr. Gabaldon said, that, that, uh, and also uh, Mr. Davis, to find those people and do a survey to find out who has those capabilities and who doesn't. And that's where the direct mailer comes in. And obviously we're trying to save money because social media is easy. It doesn't cost a penny to pump something out on a phone. If you see something fun or something in Laverne, you post it and it's out in seconds and it goes to thousands of people. But again, not everybody has that. So I think equity for everyone is the most important thing. As a city, we need to do that. And we're doing a very good job now. We are changing because the residents, again, rose up and said, you're not doing it fast enough. You're not doing it good enough. We need to make this better so everyone has access to uh, social media. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gill? Well, now that we're broken down into districts and hopefully we go into a four district system, it's gonna make it a little bit easier to go ahead and work with the areas you're in. I think that yes, you can be able to go ahead and set up a communication to work with those people in those areas to get the information, whether it be a flyer, whether it be door to door, or whether it be a simple just have you talked to your neighbor lately and see what's happening? Sometimes, you know, a district can be a plus if it's done the right way. And we have, in some areas, we have trailer parks, we have Hillcrest. Those areas, a, a 
councilman can go there and they could literally have a Friday night chat where they could talk to the people there and just say, okay, what's going on? I remember in the service, our colonel used to come down on Friday. Mobile home communities. Yeah, that's too. <laughs> but I mean, our, our colonel used to come down to our, our offices and he'd have a Friday night chat with us. <laughs> he'd let us know what's going on. He'd let us know what's coming up. And he'd tell us the information so that we were aware. And he went to every department. And we were grateful for that. So I don't see why we can't do that now. Friday night chat. Talk to your people. We out. We're done? Done. Okay, thank you. Round of applause for the candidate. Uh, okay, we've got questions for each candidate. Uh, lucky candidates. And so uh, I'm going to actually uh, start with Mr. Gill. Okay. You have 30 seconds. I have 30 seconds. Yes, yes. <laughs> Pardon? They've got a minute to respond to the question. I can do this. Yeah. And so we're going to start. The first question is going to go to Mr. Gill. So then actually, Same question? Different question. Different, Different question. Individual questions. No, no, we're going to go to the Civic Civil Tax Law question. Bill, Mr. Maldonado, and then down. Davis. Mr. Davis, thank you. It's a last name, so I get it. Uh -huh. You're... I think I got them in the correct Thank you. Here we go. All right, so Mr. Gill. Yo! <laughs> we're up. Uh, Mr. Gill. Yep. Here we go. You have expressed support for Mayor Hepburn's performance as mayor. Why are you running to defeat him? To be honest with you, the one thing I truly believe is that no one should walk into office. Nobody. And I've always felt that way because when somebody just completely does that over and over again, something goes wrong. They lose. The, they lose a vision with the people. When you come into office, and especially when someone's going in beside you, that's at least a reminder, hey, the people are watching. The people still care. Wow, 30 seconds. You only get a minute. So the reason why I'm running is because I want to make sure that this guy knows we're still looking. And we're still want to make sure that he does a good job. <laughs> we out! All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, uh, let's move on to Ms. Maldonado. What is the advantage of rotating mayor versus one mayor vote by, uh, by the people? Who decides? Don't Can you repeat, repeat the question, yeah. please? What is the advantage of rotating mayor versus one mayor voted by the people who decides? It's got two questions. Hmm. One, one more time? No, I got it. Okay. Thank you. I fundamentally believe that the mayor should be decided by the residents of the city, so mayor at large. I, I came new into this new setup of the five districting with a rotating mayor. Now, it, it's a great idea to rotate mayors. You know, hopefully that one year that you're sitting as the mayor, you you learn and you get to experience, but uh, you know, how much impact can you have if you only have one year? I believe that the benefit of districting has, for example, in my case, made it easier for me to connect to the neighbors in District 4. Many of them never, never been approached. Many of them never had their door knocked and said, hey, do you know this is happening? I'm running, right? But I think that the mayor should ideally should be voted uh, at large. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Now we're moving to Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, over the past two years, there have been many tense moments at council meetings with you and Mayor Hepburn. Can you explain how you plan on continuing to work with him if you are both reelected and restoring civility and consensus building on the city council? Do you want that question read back, read again? I think I have it, thank okay. you. 
governing isn't always um, pleasant. Governing should always be civil, but oftentimes there are disagreements. That's what's important about having a democracy where uh, council members or, or candidates can oppose differing points of view. Um, and I think those make our decisions better. There have been many times where the mayor and I have agreed on an issue, and in some cases, we were arguing up until that point. I think debate is healthy, and I, I, there are times that we tend to disagree, and I'm okay with that too. I do wanna take just a moment and talk about five districts. Five districts are important because districting is a rule of California law, and representation into council is important. So I see every council member as a peer of mine, including Mayor Tim Hepburn. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you very much. Uh, moving now to Mr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Hang on just a second. Okay, here we go. Uh, since your platform is based on changing voting procedure, and that could cause some legal challenges, as well as legal expense, if the city attorney advised not to proceed, would you follow his advice? Would you like me to reread the question? Um, <clears throat> it's my understanding that the city had a choice between four districts and five districts. So that, that should not be a problem. And if we put it on the ballot and let residents decide, that should be the final say. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right. Turning now to uh, Mr. Uh, Gabaldon. How do you think you can serve the citizens of Laverne in terms of uniting residents? I've noticed a division in Laverne that has been uh, further perpetuated due to district splitting. How do you plan to bring people together? I think it starts with uh, the individual and their desire to work with other people and to meet other people. I think my journey in walking the streets, I've met a lot of new people that I would have never met before. And I think um, out, of, out of the responsibility that I had to go do it if I wanted to get voted, I learned a lot more than I knew before about how it is if you have a culture of working together and the, the desire uh, to work together, you can work together. And I think that's how we bring the community together. I think there's a lot of faces in this crowd that don't live in the same area of the city. There's two districts that are not represented here tonight, potentially, but I think it's our responsibility as individuals on the council to make that work. Thank you, sir. Uh, turning now to Mr. Kashifogita. You got it, Your Honor. Thank you. Anytime. Two tries. Call me Cash. Um, <laughs> cash with the K. Pardon? You call me Cash with the K. <sighs> <laughs> We're on keeping the formalities in check. Uh, I love formality. Yes. No problem, Your Honor. It's yeah. America. Uh, I have to. No worries. Thanks. Uh, the, uh, please elaborate on your military and law enforcement career. What exactly was your position and which branch? And I have a, a, a specific question to add. What was your MOS? Oh, my MOS. Yes. Well, I enlisted back uh, right after September 11th. I enlisted in the United States Army. I was in 97 Bravo. If you'd like to know what the 97 Bravo is, is a counterintel special agent. After that, I commissioned as an all source military intelligence officer and assigned to the United States Army Special Forces liaison element. I don't want to get too much into detail into that. I've been in law enforcement. I started here as a cadet in 1995. I continue my journey. I worked the full gamut of the criminal justice system of police, courts, and corrections. I'm currently a special agent here in the state of California. I'm assigned to the United States Marshal Service where we go after any of those individuals that are wanted for robbery, kidnapping, murder, rape, and arson. And believe me, some of these cases have taken me here to Laverne. So I continue to be a law enforcement officer. I've always been a law enforcement officer. And as long as there's air in this lungs, I will continue to serve this country. Thank you. Thanks. All right, and next we have uh, for Mr. Hepburn. Mr. Hepburn. <laughs> You've got the reverse question that I gave to Mr. Uh, uh, Davis a moment ago. Mr. Hepburn, over the past two years, there have been many tense moments in council meetings with you and council member Davis. Can you explain how you plan on continuing to work with him if you are both reelected and restoring civility and consensus building on the city council? I request five minutes for this, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Objection, uh, sorry, Your Honor. Motion denied, please proceed. I am the mayor. 
Yeah, but I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Superior Court judge in a different county. As Mr. Davis so eloquently put, we don't agree on everything, and that's part of being a five council. No matter what the makeup is, you're going to have discussions. You're going to have disagreements, and disagreements that may not end and uh, that, that don't get resolved. Uh, one of them is the five district voting. I did not support it. I don't believe in it. I think the right of the voters were taken away. And I, not that I'm currently the mayor, but I've been through the last two years of probably some of the most difficult, as my wife will attest to, difficult times we've ever had. And we as a community rose up and fought that and fought well. And I think that, uh, but at the end of the day, um, I've come in the most difficult time as a mayor beating an incumbent mayor, and it was not easy. But we work together. We've got a lot of things accomplished. At the end of the day, you're not always going to agree. And sometimes we're going to agree to disagree. And we continually work for it. But I do respect, and I always treat him fairly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank that round of applause. OK, we're now going to proceed to our closing statements, three minutes each. And uh, what I'm going to do is start at the center of the table uh, with Mr. Gavadon. Mr. Gavadon, would you please, uh, get you, unless you would prefer I move to someone else, since I didn't mean to surprise you. I'm prepared. Go ahead, please, then. Again, thank you everybody for being here tonight. I know that a lot of the answers you've heard are you know, just part of the story, so I encourage you to learn as much as you can about each of us. The only team I wanna be on is Team Laverne. Laverne should not have a political climate whereby people running for city council should be teaming up. In that ambition, this city will not be better served where it fuels divisiveness and animus within the community. This way of working is a personal choice and on the shoulders of the participants. I refuse to participate in that by taking accountability for myself and to be an independent thinker, always looking for the best outcome, yet offering respect to those with whom I have a difference of opinion. We need to move forward and do the business of the people, always looking to garner 5-0. This tells you the team is working together. In all things, Laverne is my special place, your special place, a place we should be looking to share, but not change. We are unique and have a heritage in our living life that rings true today. People helping people, people offering fellowship and support, a community of people who come together when the need arises. We are Laverne. To maintain Laverne, I look to be fiscally responsible for there's no arms without a body. An appreciation for what the Laverne brand offers in services and the bar they sit at. An investment in technology that moves us forward offering a better opportunity for the transparency we crave. An eye on business development that looks to enhance the Laverne experience and will bring necessary tax dollars into the pot. Provides protections and resistance to housing development that does not respect our neighborhoods. To bring about proactive staff engagement with the community to ensure nobody in Laverne is left behind or without the conversation when important information is to be shared, making us all Laverne proud. This is the Laverne I want and I will work to deliver. And so you know my full resume. I'm the only person before you today that has been publicly acknowledged on two separate occasions by the mayor for my help regarding the camps, working to coordinate media, acting as coordinator and a real participant at rallies, working the neighborhoods in my area to provide notice, stood in front of schools to get signatures, and I'm the only person up here who hand delivered over 2,000 signatures and cards of opposition directly to Catherine Barger's office. I'm also the only person up here from the resolution passed on July 6th last year regarding district voting, regularly participated in the discussion all the way through. My thoughts from the beginning were that we had not fully vetted the outcomes, clarified the process, and sufficiently communicated it to the greater community for their participation. Also, I've been a vocal and public participant as a victim's first advocate, putting both public's and police's safety ahead of criminals. In that effort, I support a recall of George Gascon and have expressed it in the council chambers on several occasions leading to the outcome of the 3-2 vote, supporting our voter no confidence. So, I've been doing what I promised to continue to do, and not promising you things I would simply do to be on a team. My name is Joe Gabaldon, and, the tr and I'm on Team Laverne. I ask you to join me on the field June 7th. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
your turn, uh, Mr. Kashapakita. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who has shown up to this event, and everyone who's watching it again to Canada's Forum online or in public access television. Whether you're in my district or not, you're here because you care about our wonderful city and you want to know more about the people who may represent us as members of the Laverne City Council. As a resident of Laverne, I want to thank you again for spending the time needed to hear from all the candidates and for engaging this time-honored process of our constitutional republic was founded on. I'd like to thank my wife. In, in all things, uh, she's been my rock. Behind a great man, is, I always believe, is a greater woman. She's supported me. I've left her many a times to war, and I still come back. And every single day I leave my family to protect not just mine, but everybody else's. I'm here to serve. That is my calling. I've been a public servant since I was a kid. I have no problem continuing to serve. And I'm willing to risk my life for it. And unfortunately, possibly make my wife a widow and, her, and my kids. I don't care. That's what we do. We serve. This is America. And I will continue to fight for it. I'm asking for you for, to give me that opportunity to serve you here. I do have a plan for our youth. Give them an opportunity to be a cutting edge and why not our youth here? I want to be able to create a program for them to come in to learn government, to sit right here, to understand what it is for public safety, fire, police, public works, maybe finance. Maybe there's something for them to give them an opportunity. Public safety is just not just police, fire, and public works. It's to provide also opportunity for our kids and why not our kids so they can grow up and do good. That is what we're trying to do. I have nothing against anybody here. God bless you all for giving this opportunity to be here and for all of us to run. That's okay. Show that what you want to do here in Laverne. Why not us? If everybody else is trying to support in the county, the other small other cities, I don't hear anybody talking about Laverne. It's okay to advocate for our city. Why not our kids? Why not our youth? Why not our seniors? Why not everybody else in between to give them the opportunity to get, do good? My plan is for the youth to give them that great opportunity. Also, I have a plan for Neighborhood Watch. I'll get into details. I could talk about that. And I have, of course, our seniors. They're also our rock. But again, I serve God, country, and family, and I'm asking to serve you. My name is Mashal Kashif Algita. That's Kash for short. Please give me that opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Hepburn, please. First of all, Your Honor, thank you for being here. All of our people that have donated their time tonight to monitor. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'll make this nice and short and sweet. First of all, I want to thank my wife again for allowing me to do this. Without her, um, I probably wouldn't be doing this. There you go. Um, <laughs> anyway, I want to thank for all the support for our residents that uh, rose up in this last two years to support our community, to support our city, to support our employees. I think it's very important that uh, if I'm elected as your District 4 council member, I will serve all of Laverne, not just District 4, as I've done in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's very important to make sure that, that our city continues to be transparent. We're not there yet, but we're getting there every day. We're getting closer. I think fiscal responsibility to make sure that we have the services that our residents expect Bless you. and that they pay for. But uh, all in all, uh, I think it's been a good two years. I think we've come through COVID. We're not quite done yet, but uh, we're a healthier city. Uh, I think that as our city rose up for the uh, youth facilities at Affabaugh Page, that's what this community is all about. When we have a situation, we all rise up, no matter who you are, where you are. It's all about Laverne. Mm -hmm. Making sure that we keep everyone in tune, making sure we keep our residents safe, our seniors safe, make sure that we keep our public safety intact so that we do have a safe city. That's why the values of our city are so high. It's tough for the younger crowds to come in here because affordable is not $846,000 for a medium priced home. Yeah. But we do live in a beautiful city. And I promise you that I will continue to serve and to serve uh, honestly and to make sure that we're all aware of what's going on at all times. I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Mr. Gill. Thank you. I want you guys to look around right now. Look around this audience, this arena. Seriously, look around. And look how many people and how many chairs are vacant. When we were 
a city that voted at large in 2020. This bad boy was filled. We had overload in 2020, overfill in the other room that wanted to hear what we had to say. Now that we're districting, some of these people don't even know. How sad is that? We need to make the right choices and we need to make the proper changes. We need to make the adjustments that are gonna benefit Laverne. And I know that I will do my part, whether I'm on the council and whether I'm in behind my camera. I'm still gonna make sure that I'm able to go ahead and give you guys something that you wanna see because that's what I'm gonna do. Each and every Monday, well, not every Monday, every, my, every other Monday. Every other first Monday. First and third Monday, you know, yeah. <laughs> you get lucky, you're gonna have to be there. Yeah. <laughs> if I get, yeah, and I won't be able to film. That'd be a bummer. But the whole thing is, we all appreciate you here. We all appreciate everyone here. You took the time out to come and listen, and it's just a shame that all these seats are empty. It's just a travesty. We need to be able to bring and fill these seats back again. We need to be able to hear everybody as we once did. We need to bring that vote back. And I'll be honest with you, I've looked through all the codes and there is not one code that says we have to district. It says if. If is a big word if you use it the right way. We also, 30 seconds, I got it, may have to deal with a legal action as we divided an HOA. So sure, we avoided 30,000, we paid 50,000 to district, but if this legal action goes through, how much more are we going to end up paying? I'm waiting and seeing. Take care. Thank you all for coming. Be well. Ms. Maldonado, please. Quite humbly, I'm going to say sometimes the great woman needs to be in front. And so, I, this may be the very first time that my name is on the ballot, but I come to you with 30 years of proven experience in my profession. I have been an efficient uh, manager of programs, delivery of programs for the companies, the enterprises that I've worked, um, and innovative solutions. I am successful in my career because I have developed techniques to secure collaboration and alignment from all needed parties from C-level executives to steering committees to matter, subject matter experts. My job is technical, but what gives me the advantage is that I always seek to understand what business problem is. What, what is the business problem that needs, to, um, needs a solution? For me, it's not sufficient to identify and implement a good solution. A crucial part of what I consider a complete delivery of a program is evaluating our performance. So I always ask, what went well? What didn't go well? Because in my world, my work is subject to constant oversight and accountability. Continuous improvement is the only way to increase the quality of any service of product. We've talked about several of the items that are most pressing to the city. Um, communication improvement public safety concerns regarding the in incoming homeless as well as the up upcoming train station, how to educate our residents to ensure that they maintain a, a good quality of life rather than just increasing fees. Um, and also, again, n something that I don't really hear about is innovative solutions that will ensure that the residents in the city maintain a high quality of life. 
I've been endorsed by the Latinas Lead of California and as I mentioned before, the National Women Political Caucus because they believe that we as women, we have a lot to offer. We have experience that goes from the professional workplace to our second job, taking care of the house, taking care of the family. Um, I think that that kind of, uh, including that kind of expertise in city council is important because many of the residents, many of the voting residents, non-voting residents have that second job. And so it's important that we think of them um, and uh, for example, in having the programs uh, that they depend on. The most important job in the Laverne City Council is to ensure the services and products are, are, that are offered to the community are of, are of top quality. Thank you, and I hope that now that you know me better, I will have earned your vote. I want to thank my grandmother, Felicitas, my mom, Grace, and my son, Gregory, and my other son who's in the Air Force, Andrew, for supporting me and believing me. And on June 7th, Vote for forward thinking and value-based leadership. Vote for Estela Maldonado. Thank you. Mr. Davis, please. I want to thank you all for showing up tonight. These are important decisions that we make. Council recently had an important decision to make, and we made that. And tonight I've shared with you my vision for moving forward financially st stable and sustainable, environmentally sustainable, and maintaining our city services and public safety so that we can be creative in how we provide those services to our community. We also recently had trouble rumbles in, in Laverne to have to address the California Voting Rights Act. 50 years ago, in 1972, the council also was responding to rumbles in the city, and that's when they created the, uh, the new position for Laverne of having an identified and elected mayor. That was new, and some folks in the city were fine with it, and some had to recognize that there was change happening in Laverne, and they weren't sure whether that was gonna be good or bad. Likewise, just recently, when we had rumbles in the city about the California Voting Rights Act and whether we could maintain our at-large method or whether we had to change, we had to make a very difficult decision on city council. Some people have talked about the fact that we want you to be able to vote more often. Well, the more important thing with a democracy, small d democracy in a re republic, is to have representation and have your voice heard on city council. A four district council and an at-large mayor, not today, not tomorrow, but thinking out 50 years like our council had done in 1972, we have to look for a stable model that will survive 50 years. That model needed to represent and have each district have one voice on council. Because if we had two voices in one district, that being the council member and the at-large mayor, that district would have more superiority over the other three districts and over time would lead to disenfranchised residents of Laverne. Having grown up here, having loved Laverne, having returned to Laverne, it's very important to me that we have a fair and level playing field going into the future. I'm not so concerned as a council member what's gonna happen in the next year or election or two elections. I'm concerned with the long vision which is one reason why in addition to my vision on sustainability in the transit-oriented district, I'm looking with others studying public banking for Pomona Valley, where Laverne can alone or with other communities create a public bank to where the profits of the bank flow back as a new revenue source to our residents to be able to support the city services and public safety services that everyone on this dais has been talking about encouragingly. Lastly, the, the five district decision, I understand, people aren't all thrilled about. I think it's the right way to go forward and which is why I support it. The challenge, if that gets changed, is Laverne will no longer have the safe haven or have the ability to defend itself. So what these folks are proposing to you will sink us financially. It will cost us at least $150,000 to bring it to ballot and it'll cost millions of dollars to defend it because the next opportunity to change districts will be at the next census. Otherwise, in other places, it's been called gerrymandering. I ask for your vote. I want to make sure Laverne stays Laverne and keeps moving forward progressively. Please vote for me for District 1. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'd first like to recognize the three individuals here that are my reason for running. My wife, Lori, my campaign manager, Stephanie, and my son, Trevor. Thank you for being here. Um, I wish to thank our moderator um, and the city of Laverne and staff for all, everything you've done tonight. We appreciate it very much as candidates. I love Laverne. I've lived in this city all my life. This is my home. This is my community. And this is why these issues are very important to me. Laverne has been served well with an elected mayor that was chosen by the majority of the voters for 50 years now. I believe all of our mayors have represented the entire city, regardless of where they reside. Each member on the city council is beholden to all voters that elect them, including a citywide elected mayor who represents all of us. San Dimas has also gone to district voting using the four district map with an elected mayor. San Dimas got it right, and Muir Davis, Robin Carter, and Wendy Lau got it wrong. I aim to restore your vote for an elected mayor, and I respectfully ask for your vote to represent District 1 as your council member. Thank you. great candidates that we have heard tonight. This is truly a wonderful country, a great democracy with these a group of candidates presented to you tonight. Could I please ask you to all stand and give them one more round of applause, please. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>